Hi you guys, this is going to be our next project and on the screen you can see kind of an updated version of what I refer to as a vintage logo. This is my logo and I want to go through the process of how I created this logo. But this whole um, assignment is on you creating your kind of logo that you want. All right. So I'm going to give you a example by going through the um, project files here and I'm going to show you what um, some vintage logos look like and I welcome you to Google just vintage art logos and I'll go through that with you in the first minute of this. So here's one, here's another set of logos that I would suggest that you think about looking at as reference. Um, here is um, another one right here and here is a third one and I like this one um, not because of anything, just the fact that there are different art elements in it, especially like this banner. So I'm going to bring up this banner in a few minutes and I'm going to put it um, in an Illustrator file and I'm going to show you how to do something as simple as this banner with this background. So what I want to do is um, get a little closer to that. So I'll open up the JPEG here and I'll hit the F key because this is Photoshop and I can get bigger with it. So we can see that this vintage logo is just, it's got a nice um, circular fashion, even though some of the um, points have been manipulated around the circle. And it's got a nice um, style for the banner. And I just want you to um, use these four and anything else that you want to find as you see me going around this, um, anything else that you find that you may want to um, use for that should have opened up in oh because it's not a JPEG and I'm gonna hit the F button and I'm gonna get closer to these so my, I kind of based my logo here on something that's similar to this one and I also based it on something very much similar to this one so I have this as a reference item in the artwork that I've done. So even though mine's not totally based on that, you can see if I move over to my Illustrator piece that mine is similar to that, okay? So the next thing you're gonna do is color the logo. You're gonna give me a black and white version like I did on top here. Then you're gonna have two or three color scenarios of your logo and a main logo that you would be using um, as your main piece of artwork but I would like to see some color variations of logos and based on that I want you to see something that's on my screen um, let me hit the F button and get rid of this one and on my screen I have something from a student um, that is a logo design and it's just um, a quick logo that they sent me and then they also sent me some color versions of that logo so I want you to see that as we go through the portfolio creation process, illustrators used all the time in industry to create logos. So with that vein, you please feel free to go search for, and let me bring it over on this screen, to go search for, let me shrink it a little bit, I'm so sorry, okay. Let me bring it on this screen, because I searched for, as you can see in my search parameters up here, I searched for vintage art logos right here. That's all I did was vintage art logos. And then um, I did narrow my search. If you go to tools, just so you can get a better image of it, I went to large, okay? And I was able to get some better images. Um, this one with the coffee is a good logo. Um, ones like Pepsi Cola or um, um, the Nike symbol, that's not what I'm talking about. And I'm not talking about one like this either, where you have the ski guy next to this cloud. I'm talking about the one that's next to it, okay? So please um, be picky about the kind of logo you're going to use as your reference. And as I did in the previous assignment, you are m way more than welcome to complete the logo as I did if you want and then you can make variations because it helps um, to go through several tools and that's the thing I want to do is I want to show you how to do something like these lines or triangles or circles going around in a circle and getting them evenly spaced and doing it quickly and then using something like this square right here and to pop out different points along that square and to get it right so 
um, your logo could start out like this okay um, I'm gonna close this reference layer I'm gonna save as and I'm gonna put in here on screen logo demo just so I know <clears throat> this is my logo demo on screen I'm gonna save it as the illustrator thing here and we're gonna go to town okay so there we go and fine now I can turn off things and turn on things so what I want to do is turn off all of these logos right here and um, uh, I'm gonna I pretty much should start over with this logo so um, which I am going to do because you see right now I have a white screen okay so let me zoom in and get the screen pretty good now my artboard is just a regular eight and a half by eleven piece of paper now I know that the middle of that eight and a half by eleven piece of paper has two guides on it and those guides are set at 4.25 I'm gonna remind you right now just because I want you to know that I'm gonna snap everything into the center of this okay and that's gonna keep my logo real consistent so I'm gonna use the transform palette and the center of this half of eight and a half is 4.25 half of um, 11 is 5.5 so if I marquee this one with the direct select tool, so I have the direct select, I just draw a little box around this guide right here, and you can see how in the transform palette that says 4.25. I'm gonna do it for this one, and it says 5.5. So I know that if I lock up my guides layer, again from the last assignment, and it's up to you what you wanna do, but I go to guides and I don't lock the guides here because I like to be able to move them around quickly and I don't feel like going up to guides, lock guides, unlock guides, guides, and whatever. So um, before I go start on my logo, I'm going to show you that I went into the reference of that logo and I'm going to do something here that's going to um, unclip this and then I'm going to reclip it and show you what the heck I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm going to take this shape and just delete it. Now I went to file place and I placed in that picture that I like and the logo that I did was this one right here now I'm gonna I could base the next one on more like these diamond shapes going around the logo here and I could put a banner on this one so maybe this one is the one that I'll do now okay and then you'll pretty much kinda know how I did this one so how do I um, segregate I don't want to eliminate all these other logos from here I kinda of want to use this one right there okay and I'm gonna use it in conjunction with um, a banner so I'm also going to go to file place and I like having all my stuff on my artboard so let me go to file place and um, see which one that my banner was so let me go down to this one this one it was the example number four so I'm gonna take example number four double click it and I'm gonna move back out here and I'm just gonna click it right over here now I'm gonna put a clipping mask around this one so I'm gonna move them in place so I can have them near me okay so watch how I do it I'm gonna use the M key and you can see in my reference layer that all my both my images are right there and I'm gonna actually go like this because I needed to do something you'll know what that is later um, there I just have two images I'll back off so you can see that I have two images one two and I'll save the file now I'm gonna zoom in I want to draw a circle or a rectangle around this image large enough for me to work with it okay now I have it you can see it's right there see the rectangle right on top of that image in my layer palette so I shift click both circles and go to object clipping mask make which is command or control 7 now I've condensed it into that and I'll move that in the middle of the, my screen in a minute but look over here it actually made a new word called clip group and I'm gonna take that and just type in banner every time I do something good I'm gonna hit command s to save let's do the same thing over here but let's hit command 7 so I'm gonna hit the M key and I'm gonna draw a box around this one and I'm gonna figure out how to do this one probably isn't going to be that hard but I am going to instead of just having the badge logo I'm gonna put a banner in front of this okay so back to this I take this rectangle and I take this picture look at how even the banner clipping group is between them it doesn't matter I'm gonna hit command 7 and now they moved into a new group I'll call this um, triangles just so I know that's the one now 
I'm going to move out of the screen and I'm going to hit the E key and click on the circle here and just move both of them over near my center. I'll put them up high like this. Then I'm going to click on the banner and I'm going to move it over and put it up high. So I have everything on my screen as reference so you and me can kind of look at things. So I'm going to lock it up. Now I'm going to make a brand new layer and I'm going to name it Art or Demo Art. And I have to figure out what it is I'm doing. The very first thing that I want to do is I want to put in this brown circle. Now, I don't care about making it perfect, but I am going to make it reasonable. So I'm going to go like this. Look, at, I'm putting it on my screen to the best I can. Let me move the transform palette over. I need everything on my screen for this demo. I hit the L key, which for ellipse, because you can see it's the ellipse over here in the tool palette. And if I click in the center and hold Option and Shift, I can draw a circle coming out like this. Now I have a really nice circle. Look at this. No stroke, no fill. So I click the stroke and I click any color for now. I'll just make it black. Okay. Now I want to make sure this is in the center. So look at my transform numbers. They should be on 4.25 by 5.5. Boom. I'm good. I'm in the center. If not, I would just type in 4.25 by 1.25 by 5.5. So I hit Command S to save. Now I can make three stars on this. Okay, I don't want to make it exactly like this. I just want to make a couple of stars and I want my stars to go around in a circle like this. And I'm going to show you the first thing about making something go around in circles. Okay, so I'm not going to fill this with a color yet. I'm just going to make my shapes. So I'm going to go to the shape tool and I'm going to go to the star tool and I'm going to see that that is a um, five, one, two, three, five pointed star. So I'm going to double click the star and I get a box to come up and it says how big I want it. I really don't care but it's a five pointed star. So now I click OK and now I'm going to align this star. Um, I'm going to size it down and um, you know I'm going to command Z back because I wanted to see what was inside of that. Um, I wanted the inside radius to be a little bit smaller than that so I'm going to put in two two five not three four and I'm gonna say okay see I wanted it to be more like that star you see what I'm saying okay now I'm gonna hit the E key and I'm gonna turn this star until it is um, nice and straight up and down so how do I know if it's straight up and down well I want these points right here I want this point and this point to actually be touching on a guide so I'm gonna um, just quickly move this down here because that's a horizontal guide. Now look at how I can just go like that and just kind of turn it until that is reasonable on a nice um, thing here. Now what I would like to do, and I don't know if you can see it on screen, but um, I can tell that these points here, these all these points, see how this is not a horizontal line? I'm going to give you your first lesson in kind of manipulating something. So if it's not a horizontal line and you want it to be horizontal, I'm going to marquee just those points right here with the direct selection tool. And I have gray as the demo color. That's not a very good color. So I'm going to put in red so you can see it better. So now I have these points that are filled. These outer points are not. So I'm going to take um, the V key and I am going to um, scale them. I don't like the way the V key just, um, I have to do something in a second now because I don't like the way the box of this thing actually is um, aligning itself with the file. So I want to marquee all the points for a second. And I'm going to go to Object, remember I'm doing this, Transform, Reset, I'll hold it there, Object, Transform, Reset, Bounding Box. Now I have a nice squared off bounding box which is even with the X and Y rulers. So I take the A key, not the V key, and I marquee these points. I take the V key and watch. I can hold Option and Shift and I can move those points so that those points are the only ones that actually move. Now the other ones are actually moving. I didn't want that. Let me grab these points here, just those points. Um, I'm going to hit the E key. It's what I should have hit. And I'm going to hold Option and Shift. 
I don't want those outer points to be selected. By me going to the V key, it selected the whole star. So watch how these points are going to scale themselves. If I hold Option and Shift or Alt and Shift, they're going to scale themselves up and in the center. See how that moved up? Now watch. I'm going to let go. Boom. The star is now much more even. I didn't want to move these independently because I might not get the geometry right. So I use the A key to grab these. Then I use the E key and I held Option to go from the center out and Shift to constrain the box. Okay, long story. Let's now hit the V key as in Victor, click the circle, go back to our reference, and this is what it takes. I want those to be itsy bitsy little ones. Now I'm going to put a bunch of stars going around this. So I'm going to hold the Shift key and make that a really tiny star. Something like this. I am going to now put this, whoops, sorry, I need to grab it, hit the E key and put it somewhere in the center and then we are going to align it to that guide. I need to see that up there. I should move that a little bit closer so for a second I'm going to unlock the reference, click this one here, just move it down so I have it next to me or closer to me like this so I can have them on screen a little bit better and I'm going to move the layer palette up and over. Now I have that where I can see it. Okay, so let me grab this box right here. Hopefully you can see everything on screen. Click this box and now I need to take the transform palette and put it on 4.25. So X is on 4.25. Boom. I hit Command S to save. Life is good. Now I'm going to, um, just for giggles, I'm going to take the stroke away and make the fill black. Now I could have just hit the little flippy thing to flip the stroke and the fill color, but that's okay. Now I want to show you how I'm going to put stars. This one has three stars in a row. I want to take this, I'm going to shrink it down even more, and I'm going to put it back on 4.25. And I want to show you the first time on putting, um, having stars go around this circle. Okay, so here's how to do it the very first time. If I mess up, I'll just do it again. So, I need to hit the scale tool. It's right there. Now in the scale tool, there is a center pivot. Can you see that little center thing right there? Now if I made it yellow, I'll make it yellow just so we can see it. Actually, I can't make it yellow. It's going to be this blue color. I could change that in preferences, but I don't feel like it. I am going to go in now and put it into the center. So I'm going to Option or Alt click it in the center. Now look, as soon as I did that, this box came up. And I'm going to, um, uh, you know what, I used the wrong box. <laughs> Same thing, but not the scale tool. That was silly. I want the rotate tool. Same thing. I want to apply, I'll click the rotate tool and show you what I'm talking about. So in the rotate tool, with the center proxy, I need to have you understand that in this star, I'm referring to that center of the star. It's very important that you remember that each one of these shapes, let me hit the V key. Look at how each one of these shapes have like nine outer points. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight outer points. Those are those eight outer points there. So there's a center point there. I'm clicked on it. So sorry for that, but that's the way it goes. Now let me hit the rotate tool and option click again in the center like this. And now I get this box. It's going to let me put circles and I'm going to now put them 10 degrees. If you think of a circle as 360 degrees, I'm putting the next star 10 degrees away from that and I'll hit preview and I'll see where that one actually goes. Okay, it's not going far enough. So I'm going to turn off preview and I'm going to put in 15 degrees and I'm going to say um, preview. Yeah, I like that. Now I'm going to turn off preview and I'm going to hit copy. Now it put a star right there. Now watch how cool this is. I'm going to simply hit command D and it's going to put stars all the way around concentrically around this item and they're perfectly placed from each other. I like what it just did. Now, I'm going to save them and I'm probably going to group those together. Now, how do I quickly group those stars together? 
Okay, I'll take away some. I'll put the established in 19 whatever on the bottom, but I like these stars. I'll have them disappear into the banner, okay? But I want to um, group them. It's important that I do. So I'm going to go into my demo art and I'm going to lock up. Look at all these stars. I don't want to shift click every single one. That would be way too much. So I'm going to lock up that ellipse. See how I did that? I locked it. I take the A key and I marquee a box around all the stars. I hit command G to group and look. Beautifully, we have grouped all of our stars together. So there they are right there. There is the group. So I'm going to just say stars. Okay, I'll do something with that later, but I'm going to lock it up now. Okay, so I'm starting my job. Now, let me unlock. Oh, I didn't lock it back up. Let me um, move the reference layer over. So let me hit the E key and just put it over here. And I want to now put these triangles, these these squares that have been manipulated, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I am going to create, I'm thinking as I'm gonna do it, I wanna create kind of a little diamond shape. So that might be a four star thing, okay? Or I could just do it with a rectangle and skew the rectangle, all right? Um, let me think of the silliest way to do that. So if I have that one straight up, I just want to make a star shape. It's pretty simple. Um, I could just do it like this. I'm going to take the M key and I'm going to make a rectangle. Now, watch how silly this is going to be. So now I want the center of that thing right there. I want it filled with black. And I want the center of it. I move closer. I want the center of it at 4.25. So there. Now it's at 4.25. If I go to Object, Path, Add Anchor Point, it's going to add an anchor point automatically, this is very cool, to the centers of where the other points were. So I'm going to go out of that tool. Um, I'm going to hit the, the A key. Look at this. It's going to add one right there because that's the center, and it's going to add one right there, right there, and right there. So if I click that shape and go back to the path, and go to add anchor points, boom, it's already added it. Now all I have to do is take the pen and subtract this one, subtract this one, subtract this one, and look at how nice in a geometric pattern I made that one. Okay, now let me go over here and look at it. Okay, now we're gonna put that into a color eventually. Let me look at it again. It's um, probably in the right place, but I'm gonna scale it down. So I'm gonna click it with the selection tool, just click it, double click the selection tool, um, the scale, I said selection tool, I'm so sorry, I meant scale tool, and I'm going to do it to 50%, and I'll just preview it and see what it's going to look like, and it's good, so I'm going to say okay. Now I want those to go around in a circle, okay, and that's going to be pretty cool. Now, here's how I'm going to do it. I have to get the rotate tool, do you remember what I said? I'm going to leave it just like this, but get closer so I can move everything over. I want that on the screen, but I still want this on the screen. Okay, I'm going to now hold Alt or Option, and I'm going to make sure I'm in the Rotate tool, and I'm going to click right here, right there, and I'm going to Option click right there. Now, I get, I don't want to preview that yet, I get a perfect circle. Now, the next one, I want it to touch itself perfectly. I want it to kiss itself. So, the angle isn't going to be 15 degrees, I'll try 5 degrees. And I'm going to see how far it moves. It moved just a little bit too much still. So I need to go more like 3 degrees. Let me see how much it moved. And it's probably 4 degrees. So I'm going to put it on 4, undo it, do it back, and I think I'm good to go. So now I'm just going to hit copy at 4 degrees. Look at how pretty that is. Man, it was, okay, I have to Command Z back because it's like 3.8. So let me Command Z back. I'm going to do it all over again, meaning I have to be in this tool. I'm going to Option click right in the center. Boom. I get the same box back. Did you see that? I Option clicked. I did not just click. I Option clicked. And I'm going to go to 3, what did I say, 3.8. And now I'm going to say copy. Now let's zoom in. And this is what you have to get right. This is the cool part. Okay, that was just, oh man, 
Actually, that was perfect. That was absolutely stunning. Now all I have to do is, let's look over here, all I have to do, I'll keep that on the screen like this, is hit what? Command D to duplicate. Whoops. And I need to go back to here. Let me Command D it. And now let's duplicate it all around the screen. So let's go like this. Just keep on going Command or Control D. Yeah, I had to click on the second one in order to do it. Okay. Now I'm going to go slow here, one, two, three, four, five, and I have those perfect little triangle-y things. How long would that take you to do that manually? I think the answer is, oh my gosh, okay? So down here now, look at where we, look what we have to do. Down here we have a whole bunch of them. I need to lock up triangles and lock up banner, right? Take the V key and right hand click and Command G to group. Now I have my other group, which are the diamonds. And I'll save the file. Now let's look and see what we have. I'm going to change mine up a little bit. I'm going to have a circular emblem on the outside and I'll start coloring it black or something. It's about time for me to start making that banner shape. So I'm going to make it down here. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do though because I can unlock and click these radial buttons to select any colors I want and I have my colors already over here. Since I used these colors here for my first one, I'll use similar colors for the second one. Let's put a big ellipse. So I'm going to hit the L key, start in the center, hold Option and Shift and put a big circle out here. So that's going to be, I can shrink it in a little bit but it's now on top. Look, I have to move it down here and I'm going to put it at the bottom and I'm going to um, um, name it. Um, this is my background. Circle. And I've named it. I'm saving my file. It's selected. I'm going to leave it black. Um, I am going to now um, unlock everything. I'll take the diamond shapes and I'll color their color that color right there. See how I did that? So now they're colored that. Let me take the um, uh, the the banner. What was the banner? Oh, sorry. Oh, you're probably thinking, Mr. Sorrell, you're so silly. This is the danger, and it's okay that I did it, but it's the danger of leaving something unlocked. I'm putting all this stuff in the reference layer. That's so silly. It belongs in my demo art layer, not in the reference layer. Look where I put the diamonds. I put them in the reference layer. Can you fix that? I'm actually glad I made that mistake. I want them to be the upper shape, so I'm going to move them out of the silly reference layer and into the stars layer. Not a big deal. And I'll take the background thing and I'll put it as the background here. Now I didn't name this ellipse right there, but that ellipse gets colored the same color. So let's take the fill of that to the same color or else a lighter color, just a little bit lighter maybe. And let's take the stroke of it since it doesn't need a stroke at the moment. Actually, maybe I'm going to leave the stroke and I'm going to make it a gray. I think that would be pretty. So let me drop a warm or a neutral gray into that stroke and make the stroke be thick and not so thick, like six points and a lighter color. So let's now click that lighter. All right, I kind of think that might be cool. I'll maybe make a change on that later, but look at my stars are already in place. They're already colored black, which is cool. I like that. So I'll save the file. I can lock up the diamond shapes, lock up stars, lock up that ellipse, which I'll have it as inner circle. And now I have the background circle. So now let's go over here and see what we need. Okay, uh, we need the banner. I told you we were going to make a banner and I'm going to color it and put in Sorial illustrations in the banner, but the banner is going to look more like this. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in and we're going to make that banner type shape. So here's how we do it. We start with a rectangle. Very simple. I'll make it about the right size and then I'll move it away from here. So that's about the right size. That's close enough. Let me take the fill to nothing and the stroke to black at a very small size. 
I said the fill to nothing for the moment and let me hit the E key and put it hold the shift key and put it right down here so it's now constrained right down here all right I want to move these two points in I want that banner to be in a little bit I want to tangent it so here's how you do that um, there is a command and there's um, an assignment coming up but I'm gonna give you the gist of the assignment watch how I can hit the E key on this so I'm in the transform tool now if this is gonna be a lot to hear because there's a couple easy ways to do this and there's more than one way to do this totally alright but if I grab this one point on this side or this one point on this side I can hold command option and shift or control alt and shift and I can move this in and see how it moves in on both sides did you see how I did that let me command Z back in the transform tool I'm gonna go through a couple things if I hold just the option key and grab this point only whoops if I grab that point I'm sorry and hold the option key I have to make sure I'm in the E key if I um, grab that point and hold command option then I only move opposite corners you see how I'm moving opposite corners okay command Z back if I grab this and only hold the command key down I only move one corner did you see that I'll go through it again command Z back if I grab the corner and hold all three keys down command option shift and I go this way with it you see how I can actually make more of a trapezoid shape with that shape and I can have it just like I want it now I'll command Z back so command uh, you you grab the corner hold command one corner fine you grab the corner hold command option opposite corners fine you grab the corner hold command option shift or control alt shift and you can bend it inside and now that was a cool way and it takes a lot with your fingers to get used to it to do it now I want to actually bend these here okay I want to put a point here and a point here so I'm gonna take the P key and I'm going to um, I'm gonna um, click I should put a guide right here so the center is here now you see how it lets me intersect it there's a word right there that says intersect it it's right up to the right of that point I don't know if you can see it but it means that I'm in the center so if I move left or move right I'm not in the center boom I just now put a point on that line in the direct center now let me come over here and I get the same intersect boom now I'm gonna curve that a little bit so watch how I take the direct selection tool click and shift click now I can click with the direct selection hold the shift key and move that up a little bit so I've curved it now I want to round it off okay and I didn't lock up the reference layer I should have I did just now I'm making a lot of mistakes for you on screen now some of them aren't bad though so now how do I curve something well I don't want to curve anything but these two points so I'm going to take the pen tool hold alt or option and click inside this point now I'm going to add the shift key to it because I can pull out handlebars and look at how I can make those curved really nice now let me do the same thing click inside the point with the convert tool so I'm holding alt or option and I'm clicking but I'm holding now my other finger adds the shift key and I pull out the handlebar making sure I'm pulling it out um, I actually had it inverted here it was gonna do a freaky thing right there let me command Z back so I needed to go instead of going to the right I needed to go to the left so I hold alt, alt or option click hold the shift key and move this way and pull the handlebars out and look at how nice I have that curve now I can actually put this up a little higher like this let go so I grabbed it with the direct select I clicked and I shift clicked and I let go now I can grab it with the direct select and just move it up even a little bit higher and I've curved it kind of nice right there okay this is cool now I want to put the words sorial illustrations in here see if I'll see if it fits but I don't want it to be straight like this person typed I want it to be on an angle so I'm gonna do it just right now what do I do 
Okay, this is something that I'm going to have to tell you. Everything is a little bit difficult, but I can actually go down here. Just, I'm just going to tell you, and I'm going to type in Sorial Illustration. So let me leave Caps Lock on. Sorial Illustrations. Good. Now I'm going to go up to the Character Palette. Wherever I put it, I have to bring it over here. And I want the character palette to make me go down a little bit in size. I'm just going to put it in here to see how it's going to look. Okay. I am going to remove, I put 100 on the tracking before. So watch if I go to 50, it'll pull those words closer together. Now I'm going to actually go up to 150% or so on the size of it. Good. I kind of like that. I think it's cool. All right. But. Um, I'm going to go up one more point size. That's pretty good. I'll see how good that is. I'm going to put it down here now. I'm going to triple click inside. I'm going to hit Command C. I'm going to leave that there. As a matter of fact, I could go over here and just turn it off. Now watch this. I'm going to click that one point, which is connected to this line and this line. And I'm going to hit Command C and Command F. Now I put that line right on top of the banner. It's right there. It's the only thing selected. Now if I grab that with the direct selection tool, hold the shift key, do you see how I can just maneuver it down for the baseline of that text? I don't care if it's going too far this way and too far this way. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of happy about that and I'm going to just click the center point right there and just toggle it up a little bit. Just a little higher so it matches the curve of the line. Now, I'm going to take the text tool. I want you, it's hard to see, but the text tool is an I-beam, right? If I click right there, it turns into a path tool and I click. Now, I have the words lorem ipsum on there. Don't do anything with it, just since I copied Sorial Illustrations, I just paste what I wanted to paste right there. Now that was weird. I don't know what it pasted. Let me go back like this and I'll go back and copy Sorial Illustrations, but let me hit Command V to paste again. All right, I got to see what's going on with that, okay? Not exactly sure what's going on with that and maybe I didn't hit Command C to copy, so I'm going to actually leave that right there. I'm going to turn on Sorial Illustrations again and I'm going to triple click it and hit Command C. Now I'll turn it off. I'll click my text inside of here, hit Command A to select all and Command V to copy. Now what happened to the word illustrations? The answer is you get to play with text on a path. How do you do that? So I took the text, I still have that other text down there and I copied it. I drew a path and then you put the text tool close to the path and it turns onto the text on the path tool. But how do you move this? Well, you use the direct select tool. You simply click away. Look at how I can click on the path and I could alter that path if I want to, see? But I don't, so I command Z it back. You click on the word and you get these I-beams. Now look at the paragraph palette. I could either put it as left aligned, right aligned, or center. I'll leave it on center. Okay, why did I leave it on center? If I grab this I-beam right there, I can actually take that I-beam and move the word, move the whole thing over here. And now look at how I can actually conform it. Now it acts just like text. So if I want this 50 to go down, look it, I'm actually now scooting in the word Sorial Illustrations. And if I want to make it a little bit higher, I'm actually making it slightly higher. I'll make it 170%, but I don't want to go too far with it. Although it looks pretty cool. Now I'm going to move it up a little bit, and you can see I have my word Sorial Illustrations on my banner. Now I want to do the back of the banner. So I want to find where those things are. Okay, so I'm going to click on this thing right here, this banner thing we made, and I'm going to lock it. That's actually going to be called Banner 1. And I'm going to have three different shapes for it, but I lock it. And now this is the Sorial Illustrations on that, so this belongs to the banner. I lock it. Now let's go over here so you can see how I'm going to draw this. I'm going to take the P key and I'm just going to draw a shape starting from here, 
going to about here, going straight down and look at how I can actually make it come back to that shape and go back up. Now I'm going to fill that shape because I filled it. I only want to fill that shape with a dark gray or a dark color. So I'm going to take the stroke to nothing for now and I'm going to take the fill and I'm going to make it a darker color. Now I want that to go in behind this. So I need that shape. Look where it is up here. Let's move it below banner one and I need a fill on the banner. So for the time being I'm going to click on the banner fill and make it a very very light gray. Now look at how I've started to make my shape. Okay. Now I don't have to have um, the edge of that actually have a stroke on it too. It doesn't need one. So I'm going to take the A key, grab this point and zoom in and get real close. It's why I had you do the path exercise and look at how I can custom fit that in the corner. Look at how I can get close and maneuver that to snap right into that edge. Now let's go do the other part of the banner. So I now lock up that part of the banner and I lock up this part of the banner. So the whole thing is locked up, right? Okay. So let's take the pen tool. Let's start somewhere where I am right here. Make sure everything's locked. I just hit save and let's go over like this. Let's go over like this. I'm going to pull that a little bit so it's curved. I'm now going to hold option and click it or just re-click the point. Then I'm going to add a little triangly thing here, another triangly thing here. And now let's pull out an, a handlebar and go over to here. And now I'm going to connect it with this one. Whoops, I needed to, um, I didn't want that to have, I'm going to get close. See how that has a handlebar coming out? Well, I want to actually have that handlebar go straight down. So I option clicked it to change the handlebar. Now I can option click the point. Notice I said option click the point because it joined it without ruining anything else in the line I already drew. Now, this one needs to have a stroke. I think it should have the stroke back in. So let's take the black stroke and make it black. Okay. And did it go on there? It did not go on there. So let's go. Sometimes it does that. It's just a pain. I should just be clicking the black. Okay, it didn't go on there again. I'll click the black. For some reason it didn't go on there. This one shape needs to now move below that shape. And I need to um, make sure that that shape is still available to me right there. Now, um, I obviously can't see that shape, so the fill of this one needs to be the lighter gray. So I need to put the fill of this one in a lighter gray. Now there's my banner. I can play with it. I can maneuver it in. I'm going to grab these points and make them skinnier a little bit. So I'm going to take the A key and I'm going to grab all three of these points right here and I'm just going to manually tuck them in a little bit. See, so I made them shorter. Now I'll zoom in and I'll make sure that looks good. Yes, it's probably, well, I like that. I like how that feels. This one right here on this one should maybe come down a little bit so that it has more of a 3D feel right there. And now I have a good banner. Now I want to take both of these and put them on the other side. So I need them unlocked and I'm going to group them. So look at how I take both of these things right here. I actually don't need to group them. I need them both to be selected. Now, do you remember the reflect tool? I'm going to um, hit command C and command F. Now there's two sets of them. Look at the layer palette. There's two sets of them there. I'm going to hit the E key, click and hold the shift key and move them over somewhere like this. Now I can reflect them by going into the um, rotate tool, going to the reflect tool. Now if I hold the option key, I can actually reflect it by going like this. Whoops, I'm sorry. I need to grab this, hold option, and reflect it going this way. Okay, that didn't work. I'm doing something wrong and I there's a very, very, very quick way to do this. Um, I want to reflect it. Was it the E key? Let me grab this with the E key and hold this down. Well, that'll do it, but it won't be perfect. I want to reflect it exactly 90 degrees. That one did fine, but I want to reflect it exactly 90 degrees. So I'm going to hit Command-Z back. 
um, I can go into the reflect tool bring this window over and I can actually um, flip it see this thing up here I can flip it on the vertical right here 90 degrees so I can go like this and just flip it so that was the fastest way to do it now let's manually put it back in position so I hit the E key zoom in click anywhere inside and let's just put this in position just like that and you can see just how well I've now built my banner now the whole thing needs to be grouped and colored okay so let me take the A key let's go like this marquee everything whoops look at this big shape here wasn't locked I don't want anything unlocked that I don't want so I want this shape unlocked this one this one this one these two definitely unlocked so all five shapes unlocked I can draw a big box around everything and command G to group now I have the banner guess what I want the banner to go into the center of this illustration which if you remember was 4.25 so I can click 4.25 take the E key move this down and put it where I want which is somewhere about right here so I want that banner to be right there and I'm gonna put a drop shadow on top of these elements when I'm finished okay um, I would like that to be more in the center here so let me just move this up that is looking pretty good um, there is no perfect center to this so I'm gonna make a visual center to this and now I have a fairly good looking banner just like this which is a combination of that one and that one over there so now I lock that up now using the same technique I'm gonna say quality illustration look at this um, this I'm gonna put in here quality illustration since 1976 yes that's how old your instructor is so um, I'll even put something on the bottom and I'll say um, design and layout or something so I take um, command s to save the file I take the L key I start in from the center again so I need to start in from the center hold option and shift and draw my circle that's going to be the baseline for the bottom text. Do you follow what I'm saying? Okay. So what I want to do is I want to um, use this by cutting it. So I got to make sure everything is locked up, which the ellipse is the only thing that's not locked up. So I'm going to take the fill away for now. We're going to take the stroke and make it some color so I don't lose where it is so now I know where that is now all I have to do is look over here see and I need I'm gonna zoom in you see how the baseline of this is closer to that circle there well okay um, I'm kind of doing the one that is gonna be out on the bottom so let's take the C key and let's cut this let's cut it on the halfway point here and the halfway point here okay I've cut that I'm going to remove the banner from your eyeballs for a second. Now I'm going to take the V key. I'm going to click only on the top. Now I want to scale this down. So I'm going to click up here, hold Option and Shift, and I'm going to scale it to the inside of this. And I'm going to move it down onto, whoops, I did it too much. Uh, option and Shift, and I'm going to scale it to about here, right to about here now I'm gonna hit the E key and I'm just gonna move it down until I feel that it's a good definition of the inside baseline so here's the baseline for that lettering here is the text or baseline for that lettering good I've now got both and I did it out of one circle so you're not gonna see these two things I'm gonna type in right now what I want it to say on the top and I'm gonna say text tool quality is that in all caps I need to see that um, let me Z back and let me click away from that okay it's in all caps so let me um, push the all caps button quality quality um, I don't want to say art or illustration because it already says illustration. So quality, <laughs> quality rendering. Let's 
probably stupid. Since 19, whoops, 76. And I'm gonna hold Command Option and I'm gonna put the one down here and I'm gonna type in that I want at the bottom to say, um, um, I'll put in a blank phone number. So this might be my phone number, okay? So that's fine. I'll just put in uh, 586 um, option um, 555 like they do on TV. Uh, option 8 is the bullet. Uh, actually, that's not what I want to do anymore. I want to go period because that's the new thing that's done. So I, oh, I like that. So let me go 555 um, period um, zero, 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 zero. So that's what I'm going to put on the bottom. Now I'm going to spread that out a little bit, but I don't have to worry about it. So here's um, a simple way to do this. And I'm almost done with this one. And I think that you should make something like I'm doing right now so that you can make the one that you want to make um, using the different techniques that I have shown you. Okay, so far. So let me take the text tool and triple click inside that command C. Let's just um, use the selection tool and click away from it. Now let's use the regular selection tool and click on it. Let's hit the T key. Let's look for the text on the path tool and click and hit command V to paste. Now it's black on black. I should have made it white. So let me click inside of here, hit command A to select all, and let me change the color of the font to white for now. Now, um, I'm going to lower the size to 130 on the height, and then I'll see if I go to 20 on the tracking, let me go to the direct select tool, and let me make sure in the paragraph menu that it's on center. See how it's on center right there? I'll leave that right there. And I can grab this and go like this with it, and I can go in here, quality illustration. So. Um, I'm grabbing it and it's still I still need to go smaller with the text. So let me go to 14, 13, right there, 12. Oh, I like that. So let me go down to here and let's go over to here a little bit less. There, that looks good. So we're gonna go to 11 points on the text, okay? Same with on the bottom, maybe a little bit bigger on the bottom. So let me click here and hit Command A to select all. I'll leave it as black, just as silly as that sounds. And let's click on here and look at how it went to the underside, command V to paste, triple click inside of there, change the color, I should have changed it before. Whoops, I have the wrong words in there. Let me um, triple click in this again, command C. Let me triple click in this again, command V, there. Now, let me triple click in there again and change the color to white. That was way too hard. Now, is it upside down? Answer yes. Do I care? No. So let me move it in. Let's go back down to the 12 points, at least for now. And I'll leave it at that tracking. Maybe I'll even go up with the tracking to 40. Now, watch how I put it on the other side. I click and I click the text, not the path. I click the text so I can see these markers. Here is the center marker. You have to grab the center marker and put it on the other side. Now I'm gonna have to move these points down so it looks better. So look, I'm gonna click this one point, hold the shift key and move it down just a skosh. Let's go over here, let's click this one and move it over just a tiny bit. I have to zoom in. Move it over just a tiny bit there, that's fine. And let's move this one over to the right a tiny bit. And I have to click the text. Let's now grab the outer marker to the right and put it all the way up to here because I have it on center. And let's put this one all the way up here. Now, there is my text. So um, let me click on the text again. Okay, and I'm going to go to um, 130 points. It looks pretty bad for there. And I like how that looks. I'm gonna go up in size now, and let's go back to 50 on this. And there is my emblem right there. And let's turn on the banner. Hopefully the, everything shows up. I'm gonna move the banner down now. So let me click the whole banner. Let's grab the whole banner and let's move it down. Now, I don't need to get rid of the stars. I think that's cool, okay? 
and um, I have exactly what I wanted on the screen and I kind of like it. Now I want these dots to appear in brown right in here. Okay, so I really only need a few of the dots, um, but I still have to use the proper illustration techniques for that. So I'm sorry, but I'm going to turn this. Um, I'm going to um, hit the L key, draw from the center. It won't take long. Um, actually, um, no. I am going to go start with my first dot and I'm going to put it right in the center here even though I'm going to delete that dot out. So look, I'm making a dot right there, right that size, right there. And I'm going to make sure that the transform of that dot is on 4.25. It is. If I turn off the phone number, you'll see it a lot clearer. Um, for some reason, the phone number is not going away. How many? Oh, I had two phone. Oh, that was the phone number on the bottom. Sorry. Okay, so I'm going to have that be a brown dot. So let's click the dot. Let's um, add the brown tone to it. Okay, so now do you remember how we did this? It's pretty simple. Okay, so I'm going to make dots go all the way around the circle. So I'm going to find that ellipse. I'm going to lock everything else up because I want to be able to marquee and group the dots and then get rid of what I want. So everything is locked up command S to save the file. So we select that. We go to the rotate tool. So I have it as the reflect tool. I go to rotate. I option click in the center of the file right here, right where I'm going, right there's where the guides are. Option click and now um, I want the dots to be more separated, so this time I will say five. Let's see what preview does. It's still not far enough. Let me uncheck preview. Let's go to about eight. And let me um, hit preview, and that's good. I like that. That was really good. So I'm gonna um, just hit copy. And now all I have to do is hit Command D to go all the way around the whole thing. Okay, there we go right there. Now I have to group them all and get rid of what I don't want. Okay, that's very easy to do. So, um, since everything else is locked up, I should be able to take the A key and marquee a big box around there. Hit Command G to group. Find it. Call them um, inner circles or dots. I, you know what? I'm going to say dots. Okay, good. And now I'm going to turn on the, not unlock it, but I'm going to turn on the telephone number, which is this one. And I don't want the dots on the telephone number. So I'm going to take the A key and marquee a box around the ones I don't want right there. Hit two deletes, one, two. Now let's move over here. I don't want these. And I certainly don't want the ones that are on top because they're just getting in the way. So two deletes. When you marquee with the direct selection tool, you should get, you should always hit two deletes. And let me get rid of these up here. So I put in the circles to take away most of them. Now I like that feel. I like how this has the dots going around. The last thing I'm going to do is put kind of a shadowy shape on top of this. And it's going to be real easy to do. Okay, I'm actually going to draw it. It's not even that hard. So what I want to do is um, lock everything else up right there. Um, I don't want that one. Uh, this quality rendering, where is that? That's right there. Okay, I don't need that. That one can just get thrown away. And I don't need... I don't need that one. That Sorial Illustrations is up there. I'm sorry, I'm just cleaning house, so that one gets thrown away. I don't need that one, which is the telephone number down here, that one gets thrown away. Command S to save the file. Okay, now let's go do the shadow shape. So everything's locked up. I take the pen tool and I'm going to draw. It doesn't have to be that accurate on this. Um, gosh, I should do something so simple. Oh, I don't want to do it, but I think I should. I don't want to do this, but I think I should. I'm going to take the banner the entire banner and I'm going to duplicate it. It's really simple because we're going to use Pathfinder. 
Okay, I'm going to lock up the top one. I'm going to select the bottom one. I'm going to hit the E key, grab it, hold the Shift key, and move it down here. Great. Now I'm going to take this, which is the text inside of there, and I'm going to delete it. I don't need the text on that one. So now I select all the shapes right there. Using Pathfinder, we want to um, unite all those shapes into one. Boom. See how easy that was? Well, that's our shadow. Okay, that's the shadow. All I have to do is move it back up. So I click, remove the stroke, make the fill be 100% black. I'm going to put it back up underneath like this because I'm going to want this to be really cool when I actually um, make my other versions of this. Now, what do I do? Let me zoom in. You use opacity, and I'm going to use the opacity and opacity this back to about 20% and a little bit more. Let me go to 40%. So, let me hit the return key. Now, look at how that looks like a shadow underneath. I could even go to 50%. That would be still really cool. Now I'm going to hit Command Semicolon to turn off my guides. And there is your shape for Sorial Illustrations. I don't really like that color here, so I should actually change that color to something that's a little bit more, I don't know, conducive to the whole thing. And I probably don't even need this stroke here. And I don't like where the banner is. Um, it kind of cuts off one of the diamond shapes. So I kind of want the banner to be slightly bigger. So I'm going to take the banner and the shadow. So I'm going to click on the banner and the shadow. And I'm going to go to the scale tool and go to 105%. And now it makes the banner slightly bigger. And it has a better feel on everything. The banner looks really good. Now it needs to be moved down just a skosh because it's getting too close to the 6 and the Q. So now I am good to go and that looks really nice. That looks really nice. So there's my command S to save. I'm just staring at my own illustration. And now what I want you to do is to put that into a form like this. I want you to just do this. I wouldn't mind if you just did this. You don't have to say Sorrel Illustrations, but just say whatever you want. And then you can write whatever you want. Then you can give me one that you want to do. Using all of those really cool examples and any other example that you find like this. So is that okay? I think that's going to give you a pretty good um, indication of what it is that I want from you. I want you to take this and then I want you to duplicate it a bunch of times and I want you to turn it into different colors. Now that's not so hard. All you got to do is play with the fills. So I'll put this on my other screen and I'll show you how to shrink one. So if I turn off the reference layer, boom, it goes away, right? Now um, I'm not sure I liked that big circle shape there so I might turn it off. I might take a rectangle and I might just take the rectangle like this and I might um, just give the rectangle um, a darker color in the back and I'm going to put it, if you remember, needs to be at 4.25 so you know nothing is perfect by 5.5 and now um, I kind of like that. I think that that looks good and it probably doesn't need to be in a dark. I want to change the color on it. Um, that looks pretty cool. Um, and let me go even lighter. Um, if I was going to go this light, I probably would have a circle starting in the middle and going right to the edge of those triangles and have it black. So I'm going to take um, that background circle that we did and I'm going to shrink it down. So I'm going to put it above here. I'm going to select it. Let me um, make this smaller. I realize I'm keeping on going with this, but this is what it's all about, folks. Option Shift. If I grab this with the V key, Option Shift, look at how I can shrink this right to the inside of those, right to the exact center of those. And now that looks pretty cool. Yeah, that looks, 
That looks pretty cool. So Command S to save the file, and there is your Sorial Illustrations, Mr. Sorial. And now what I want to do is unlock every single thing in here, which is dangerous, I realize it, but close demo. Turn it off, turn it on. Duplicate it. Boom. Now I can take the duplicated one, lock up the other one, select the circle, move it up here with the E key, just move it up here, and shrink the whole thing. Just go double click to about 60%. Make sure scale strokes and effects is selected and hit OK. And now take the E key and go to town. Now, would it be that hard for you to open up the layer palette and select the circles for every single one that you want and change colors? I don't think so. That's exactly, exactly how I did this one. Whoops. This one. That's exactly how I did this one. So I was able to turn, um, and let me um, get close to these because they look pretty good. Okay, so that is how I did this one. That is how I did this one. I just change the colors on it, okay? Um, I will say this. Do you remember how I clipped a picture? Do you remember how I did that? I want to describe something to you. If you wanted to do lines like this or texture like this in the background, do you know that these lines actually extend beyond the circle I'm pointing to right there? So what I did was I drew one line, I duplicated it, then I hit Command D for all the lines and it just kept on going down. Do you understand what I'm saying? Then I drew a circle on top. Then I, um, before I drew the circle, I grouped all the lines together. Then I drew the circle and clipped the group with the circle. Now, I know that sounded like a lot and I know you may have a question on that. So here's how I did it. I clicked and shift clicked. I am going to change this to a line. Watch out within seconds. I can just click on this with the V key, hold Command Option, and put a second one right there. Now, let's just do what I said. Let's go Command D on all of these circles. Just keep on going. Watch how easy. I'm sorry, but I'm going to do this. Let's marquee everything there. And what did I say? Group it, Command G. I'm going to throw this away in a second. I'm going to take a L key ellipse, and I'm going to hold Option and Shift, and I'm going to make a circle on top of that. Now watch how simple. I take the ellipse and select it. I shift click this and I hit command 7. Boom. You have your lines inside. And if you want a stroke around the circle, go inside the group, click on the circle for the ellipse, make sure the stroke is in the front and add your stroke to that and look at how you can make it as thick as you want. So look at how neat that is. Look at how clean that is. So I just wanted you to see a couple of cool things there. Um, so watch the movie, please. Obviously, if you've gotten to this point, you have watched the movie. But if you have to um, refer to different parts of this movie as you're doing your circle or you're doing your emblem, feel free. Okay, thank you, and I'll see you on the next assignment.